My name is Omar. I'm one of your podcast hosts, and I'm also a lawyer at Treadstone Law. For most Canadians looking to buy, sell, or refinance real estate in Ontario, a lawyer is the last thing on their mind. They're busy dealing with banks, mortgage brokers, realtors, and when everything is said and done, they look for a law firm to finalize the transaction. At this stage, if something is broken, it's hard to fix. And believe me, I'm a real estate lawyer, I've seen it all. How do you gain the right help early on in the process? Speaking to a lawyer one-on-one can get real expensive real quick, and it's probably not the best idea. That is why Treadstone Law has launched several resources for Canadians to have access to the information when they need it the most. You can sign up for one of our online workshops or to our email list to receive information you need when you need it. This information is designed for you to be better prepared and avoid costly mistakes. And for a limited time, it's free. Visit treadstonelaw.ca slash MAS offer or click the link below. Welcome to Hustle and Grit. My name is Umar. I'm a co-host at Hustle and Grit and co-founder of Treadstone Law. This episode is part of our series called Movers and Shakers, where we speak to leading minds in real estate, finance, business, who are changing the game and moving the needle forward. This podcast is actually attempt number two uh, with, with, with a very fascinating and brilliant mind at an up and coming startup based out of Calgary, Canada. Mark Ledane is the VP of Corporate Development at Neo Financial, where he leads a team that is helping Neo change the financial services industry. Prior to his role at Neo, Mark had a variety of roles, including Senior Vice President at Valdair, an oil and gas tech startup that has raised $70 million in venture financing to date, and is working to make the energy supply chain efficient and sustainable. Prior to his role at Valdair, Mark was also VP Invest- Investment Banking at Barclays. Welcome to the podcast, Mark. Did, thanks, did I do uh, your bio justice, or? Yeah, that was uh, that was great, and thanks for <laughs> thanks for having me again. I assume I said something shocking last time, and it got uh, it got deleted as a result. <laughs> no, so what happened was so there's a um, we're 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 using Melon app, so it's a Logitech's podcasting app, and then what what they they have a timeline on um, uh, downloading and. Uh, uh, getting everything kind of on your own servers. And we thought we had done everything. Then we go back, we're checking. Then we started working with their customer service and it was just lost in the abyss. But, but yeah, no, I appreciate you coming back on. Yeah, this is, this is great. Now we're, we're always so, happy to, to tell the story. It's, it's important for Canadians. So always happy to, to spend time on it. And you guys, you guys do a good service getting these stories out there. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's, that's kind of, the goal and that's why i mean i, I ask about your bio because it's always the companies and people that we work with there's usually there's so much to talk about um that's why i always find it's how do i find um the right key points um even when i'm describing let's say neo financial to someone or as we were going through your bio to see what the key points to talk about were um it's difficult to kind of pinpoint um, what is the best thing that the the company or individual has done or is doing when there's so much going on, right? And I think that's why this will make a a very interesting conversation. Anyone who knows me knows I rant at at length on on the need for innovation in the financial services um, and real estate sector. Um, and I think Neo is really a, one of the companies at the forefront of, of that space as well. So this should be an exciting conversation for our guests. Yeah. Um, so without further ado, I want to I want to jump right in. So so kick, just starting off, um, can you I know I mentioned your uh, vice president corporate development at Neo. Um, tell us what that entails. What does that mean? Yeah, if, if you think about um, kind of the role of the larger corp dev team, we have these these no fee digital first products uh, that we've built. And we, th- we think about them positioned in the market. Uh, they're extremely advantaged. Uh, Canadians in general, like if you look across developed nations, we pay the highest fees um, for financial services um, products of any developed country. Um, so, you know, a no fee product um, is highly competitive. But if you think about it, there's a component there in terms of um, getting it in the hands of the consumer, making the consumer aware of that value prop, 
And Corp Dev kind of does that in in two ways. Um, there's there's a distribution part of our role where, okay, what are the the partners, the entities, the people that can distribute our our products to Canadians so that they can become aware of it? Um, and you think about all those those um, different groups within kind of Canadian demographics. You've got university students, you've got immigrants. Um, where's the place where we can connect with them um, to get those products in their hands so that they can start saving, so that they can start um, spending less on kind of financial services. And then the, the second component is how can we um, look to Canadian businesses, big kind of Canadian business partners and say, hey, you want um, a more direct relationship uh, with your customer. You already have a relationship with them. You may understand them better than anyone. How can you enhance that through um, financial services? So there's a component of the Corp Dev team that's doing these kind of complex strategic partnerships where we're partnering with large Canadian entities so that they can better serve um, their customers through financial products. Um, so that can be some of the co-brands that you see in market. Um, you know, HBC, uh, we partner with them on their, their credit card program. Um, all the way to, um, you know, maybe uh, you're a travel agency and you want to provide people with our travel bundle. That's something that's um, going to accelerate your own service. It's going to give them um, value. That's kind of a, a partnership where, you know, it's a little more bespoke. Um, it's not sales, but it's getting, you know, value to the Canadian client. It's getting value to our enterprise partners. And we've had a lot of success this past year, moving that all the way to full kind of Fast partnerships. So you think about, you know, banking as a service. Um, can we do branded um, products? Uh, so you think about a credit card. Um, you know, can we white label that? Um, can we brand it for a partner? Maybe there's a wealth manager that wants to offer their own credit card. Those kind of more complex initiatives and partnerships also sit with within Corp Dev with the the kind of overarching north star of how can we get these these products to Canadians uh, faster than we would otherwise. A lot of uh, a lot of interesting stuff. Um, so a lot of, I guess, two major segments and a lot of stuff going on in each of those major sectors as well. So, I mean, I want to dive uh, deeper into um, into each of those categories. But before um, uh, kind of getting into um, those services and, and, and the meat of that aspect of, of, of this podcast, I want to talk a little bit more about um, your, I guess, uh, your, you. So, so why Neo? Um, you had a very successful career. Um, you worked at uh, two um, uh, a very kind of um, uh, upper level roles at great companies. Um, why did you choose Neo? Yeah, I'd say there's there's a mission driven part, and then there's kind of the the experience in terms of you know the role itself and and the way we interact um, with Canadians. So I'd say the the mission driven, um, you know, that's that's easy to to understand like Canadians are are underserved um, a, a really good example that we see a lot is if, if you think about um, new immigrants in in Canada so we're getting you know hundreds of thousands of, of immigrants a year um, the traditional um, banking environment does not serve that group one you know fees are complex opaque and they're varied um, if anyone's new in an environment that's not going to be a way to set up an ecosystem that's going to serve them and the way you actually engage with financial institutions um, is typically on their terms. Um, so, you know, you got to make an appointment. Um, you got to have the exact data that they need to, you know, open your accounts. Um, you have to kind of conform to the demographics that they want to serve or they will wait until you do and then, you know, target you aggressively at that point. Um, if you think about, you know, coming to this country, OK, I've got a job that I'm working at. I probably can't, um, you know, be on hold with a bank during their regular hours. I probably can't make an appointment to open up the products that I need, my family needs. Um, so our ability to, hey, we have an entirely digital onboarding. You can get the products you want. You can get the no fee products. You can do that. Um, you know, maybe you get off work at midnight. You can take two minutes on your phone. You can get onboarded then. Um, that's an experience that um, allows many more Canadians to access um, financial products, to access credit than would otherwise. Uh, so I'd say that that mission driven part, that's exciting. That's something, you know, we all come to, to work for um, and that we fundamentally believe in. And we've been lucky enough to, to be able to kind of create um, an impact with over a million users across Canada now. I think the 
the next part of it is, okay, what's what's the day to day like when you're building something? Uh, and I think kind of the, the fast feedback loop is what we all target when we're building something. Um, no matter you know how smart you are, how hard you're working, if you don't get feedback on what you're producing for a year, um, you're not going to be able to iterate on it. You're not going to be able to improve it. And I think the exciting thing about products that consumers interact with daily, that they they comment on daily, where um, you know we get a ton of data points every day on here are the reviews, here's what people liked, here's what people didn't like, we can change it rapidly. That feedback loop is just going to allow us to better serve Canadians. And I think, you know, anyone that's that's looking for kind of a really exciting, fast paced career where they can constantly improve something that's out in the world today. If you can get a fast feedback loop, which I'd say, you know, tech companies doing consumer um, driven, you know, products or services are kind of the pinnacle of that. Um, those are just really exciting days to days where you can make a meaningful impact because you are responding to how people use it, what people think about it. So those are kind of the the two components that, um, you know, really, really kind of drove me um, to this role. And I was quite lucky in, you know, my past roles where I love enterprise SaaS. Um, you know, that's a great career for anyone that's that's listening and in investment banking. Um, you know, that's a fantastic uh, career. You learn a lot. It's fast paced. You're working with smart people. Um, certainly though, I've, I've really enjoyed my, my time at Neo and excited for kind of what we're continuing to build. A lot of kind of new developments. I think, um, one of the interesting points that you noted as well. Um, so at Treadstone, uh, we've worked with all of the big institutional lenders and kind of seen a lot of their different programs and initiatives over the years. And one of the, uh, um, one of the biggest, uh, um, challenges that, uh, that were was they were unable to crack, I guess, is the best way to 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 say it um, was the the new immigrants market where you, you had a lot of different programs going on c coming out that were tailored to new immigrants, but that weren't working um, for many of the reasons that you actually mentioned, um, uh, including um, the in a, the the requirement to have to go into a branch when you're arriving at this country where you, maybe you have to work a little bit extra right now to, to because it was expensive to arrive here, maybe. You don't have the time. You don't have a babysitter. A lot of things going on, um, and and that was one of the um, um, kind of main feedback that we received from our clients um, on the uh, from uh, at, at Treadstone Law, where um, as new immigrants, the the requirement to have to go in branch was difficult, um, yeah. but it was something that uh, no one was willing to bridge um, uh, and and provide that online resource or access for essential um, financial services. I guess is is. And that's the way I see it, too. I think um, people uh, during the um, pandemic, there was that term thrown around about essential services. Right. So what were essential services? Banking was open, but banking was not I, I would don't think it was accessible. Right. If, yeah. if you went to a bank during the pandemic, there would be lines outside the branch and you had everyone standing six feet apart. So you had maybe three or four people in branch. Um, yeah. It was it was a very poor experience. And especially for the elderly or someone without the time. Am I going to wait two hours to get into a branch um, to do a simple transaction? Right. So that's where kind of the bridge was. The other side, um, I want to dive a little bit into this because I, 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 uh, I think it's important um, uh, two aspects. So you guys are innovating on the consumer front and you're innovating on the business front, um, as you mentioned. Right. So on the on the business side, you have a lot of products um, uh, targeted towards uh, assisting businesses in their growth. Um, it, it is is the kind of the best way I understood the the full feature of the products. Um, what I like about what you said was the um, the iterative and uh, model that takes feedback continuously, right? That's not something that is that we've seen happens often um, in the startup space or in in at least recently over the last few years in Canada, things have changed. We've seen good startups coming out that are uh, um, kind of looking at, okay, I'm solving this problem, but I'm also understanding whether I'm solving it right and then I'm improving that solution and then I'm, I'm continuing that path towards the perfect product. Um, so I guess two questions. First question, um, so tell, kind of give a little bit more insight into this, uh, to, into how you provide that feedback or how you look at feedback from a business perspective. Um, are you guys get, getting feedback and what can you, can you kind of dive into that a little bit more? Yeah, of course. And, and this is nice too. Um, you know, for if you think about Canadians that are listening that that use our, our products, 
we uh, we go through all the feedback, um, good and bad, and we incorporate that into the product. We incorporate that into our roadmap. And I think, you know, one of the exciting things that you can do, um, you know, slightly better than peers as a, as a tech first company is you just get um, more data and, and you're typically doing a better job of, of putting it at your fingertips. Um, so, you know, all the, the Neo reviews um, across the, the web, they're collect in different places even, you know, they're collected, um, like we flag like, hey, here are the, the pros, here are the cons. Some of them we can improve rapidly. Um, you know, some of them take more time, but we put on the roadmap. Um, we're ingesting all that that feedback and it, it's um, driving kind of how we, we serve um, Canadians. And I think the other thing too is you can see um, data on, on usage. Okay, you know, where are people um, slowing down? Where are the points of, of friction? So that you can even preempt, um, you know, any problems that they may have with the product, any complaints they may have. And I think the, the exciting thing too, when you think about fundamentally serving uh, the Canadian uh, consumer is we can even go through, um, okay, what are the data points on our peers, on other providers, and what are people not liking about that product so that, you know, when we do um, launch ours, we can um, take that internally and improve on that experience for Canadians. So the the really easy example um, that's a simple one to flag is uh, one of the main complaints you see on you know message boards of traditional financial institutions is, okay, I'm um, you know traveling, um, you know maybe I'm visiting um, you know my kid who's in Europe or who's in the U.S. and I think my credit card's been compromised for some reason. I have to spend you know four hours on the phone um, with my current institution to uh, freeze it or to even find out if it's um, compromised or to maybe you know freeze ATM um, related transactions um, you know maybe I just lost it on the subway on the way to work I want to freeze ATM transactions until I get home because I think I might have also put it there um, the amount of time you have to spend on that simple problem is uh, pretty unbelievable that I'm sure you know anyone appreciates who's been in that situation where they're they're trying to get a hold of someone to help them we uh, we actually took all those those features and we put it on the app so you can just click a button and you can freeze your card um you can click a button and you can freeze atm withdrawals um all kind of those headaches that may have taken you away from you know visiting your family or enjoying a trip um we actually put them in a way where uh, consumers can interact with them on their own time um so that's the type of thing where there's so much data in terms of what people would want um from kind of better financial service providers. And we're able to use that and kind of really internalize it to, to better serve Canadians. If you're looking to retain Treadstone Law, it's never been easier. Our entire process is online. From completing the retainer to your signing appointment, everything is done from the comfort of your own home. No need to take time off to visit a lawyer's office for your signing when you can complete everything from your living room table. The best part is you don't have to pay anything when you're retaining our firm. Visit treadstonelaw.ca slash MASOffer or click on the link below to retain us today. Enjoy the podcast. Awesome. And so when you talk about so your iterative process, um, continuously kind of listening to consumers, listening to businesses and improving upon the, the services. I guess what we didn't really go over in a little more detail is what are those services, right? So so what are, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, each of the services that Neo offers? I'll, I'll throw up the screen as well for your website. Yeah. So provide some. Yeah, we've got, um, so we've got the bank account. Uh, so if you think about the, the bank account, you've got high interest, you've got CDIC insurance, um, and it's all at the, the tip of your fingertips. Uh, We've got the the credit card and um, we have the secured card. I think that's something that um, we've been really proud of when you think about that product is you're taking a, a no fee product um, and you've got really high cashback rates. Um, typically, there's a trade that consumers have to make where they are paying for those um, cashback rates in another way. Maybe they're doing it through fees. Um, Maybe they're they're doing it um, through kind of ancillary services uh, they pay for. Sometimes it's on the points conversion where the points conversion is awful and that's how the provider makes their margin. If you think about us, those cashback rewards are 
paid for by Canadian businesses that want your business. Um, so if you think about the the kind of rewards motion currently or the advertising motion currently in Canada, if if I run a restaurant, um, I'm paying you know Google or I'm paying Facebook to try to get you in the door. Um, that's money that's you know going somewhere else, um, and they're taking their share before I'm I'm using it to get you to my establishment. Um, you know that's kind of a, a high friction pathway where every time dollars are lost there, you're likely going to have to to pay more for my services. The the kind of exciting thing now, you think about our our ten thousand um, partners, is they put the cashback reward so you can look in the app as you see here. You can open it up and look at all the places nearby that are going to pay you to go there through cashback rewards. Um, they do that um, as part of their their advertising budget, and they can give you you know five percent cash back, ten percent cash back. We have places nearby that are twenty percent cash back, and that's paid for by them. That's a benefit received by you to continue to drive that behavior, um, which it which it obviously does. Like that's something that that every Canadian would take advantage of, and I think. The thing that's exciting there is that cashback goes right into your cashback wallet. So you can use that on a one-to-one -one basis to pay down your credit card. You can use it to put into your high interest savings um, that we have. So that's something I'd say that's kind of the, the tip of our spear where Canadians love that that feature. They love that ecosystem. And you know it's really starting to become a flywheel where more Canadians come on it, more businesses want the attention of those Canadians, and it's saving both parties a lot of money. Uh, and then I think the the other exciting things that we launched recently, um, we launched our investments um, product, and we launched our mortgage product, which um, I think the exciting thing about our mortgage product is just how we're reducing the friction in terms of getting mortgages um, into the hands of, of Canadians and reducing the the stress of that process like as you know really high friction time in the the kind of canadian housing market today um you know any kind of um way you can reduce stress um for canadians for your clients um get them better rates that's going to be very valuable in terms of kind of that long-term customer re relationship uh in this market so those are kind of the the key products that we have today and i think the nice thing too is we've been able to all add them within that that digital interface, which just creates a better experience for uh, for Canadians versus some of the alternatives. Interesting, yeah. And one thing I think uh, a notable point is um, um, a lot of people may not understand how much of a game changer the five percent cashback is for Canadians, because before that, the norm was at most maybe two percent, um, or they give like you were saying some kind of rewards, and it ends up being one percent or something else. Um, it was unheard of to have 5% in Canada. I, I spent um, two years in, in Minnesota uh, during uh, law school. And I remember going to the banks there and thinking, wow, this is like night and day what they're giving me. They're saying, they're, here's a free sweatshirt. Here's free this, free that. Just open an account, 5% cash back, whatever else it is. Um, whereas then we come back here and, and we just got accustomed to not having that same level of, or the higher level of, Kind of value and service so i think i think that is really a game changer in terms of um of the industry um both from a service perspective um and then also the product itself what you're receiving the five percent cash back um so i guess um just uh moving forward so you're doing a lot um we talked about the two main uh, kind of pillars and then you have neo money and neo invest as well um now is there a lot of improvement left? Um, is, is this is this kind of where it, uh, where you're at that place where you've solved all the problems in the industry, or or is there a lot left to be done? Man, there is uh, there is such an unbelievable amount um, to be done in terms of kind of improving the the experience for Canadians, and then also allowing them to to access the products as soon as possible. Um, so a good example. Um, that kind of combines both both kind of the partnership corp dev side and kind of our constant improvement on tech is one of the things we we've, we've done a lot recently is we've been partnering with a number of the the credit counselors. So if you think about um, someone that's in a situation uh, where they may have some debt they need to restructure, um, they may be seeking the advice of a credit counselor. Um, that's an extremely stressful situation. If you think about that today. 
typically uh, you go in and they will suggest, hey, as the first step, um, you know, you should open up um, a bank account with no fees. Um, sometimes finding that's a lot of work. Sometimes you got to make an appointment that's a week later, which that's an awful experience. Like you worked up all this courage to talk to someone about your financial situation. And now they're saying like, hey, it'll get solved in a week after a number of more appointments. Like that's just a terrible experience for Canadians. So we've been partnering with a lot of them where we give them custom tech where someone comes in, um, they can onboard that person um, like really easily. They can actually give them a bonus. So it's an OFI product. They can give them dollars in their account. That's something where, um, yeah, we could we could target Canadians through, you know, broad advertisements, but we'd rather design tech to to give kind of that customer profile who's in a specific situation where they need to be aware of our product. They need to be, um, you know, helped by our product. We'd love to enable people, you know, through tech and features um, to do that in a, in a frictionless way. And I think the number of things that you can add on financial services um, is just a really exciting uh, place to be, even in terms of uh, how you kind of uh, cross pollinate between the different um, products. If, if you spend a lot of time, one other example that's cool is if you spend a lot of time in our uh, cashback wallet, a number of our partners are starting to put um, products in a, in a cash out store. Um, so still gets the one-to-one -one benefit of, of cash, but now it's another way for our partners to access, you know, our consumer. And it's an an another way for these Canadians to get, you know, products at a discount that they may not get otherwise, um, which is kind of a full flywheel in terms of, okay, you know, we have an individual that trusts us. How do we improve their everyday financial experience? There's, there's so much you can stack on top of that. That's so interesting. Um, the one thing that I, I kind of really caught my attention was the, um, was the the tech uh, component of um, a credit recovery plan, I guess is what you could say, a, a, a tech-enabled credit recovery plan, where, like you were saying, the traditional process is speaking to someone and then going through a series of appointments. And usually when you're in a difficult uh, yeah. situation with your credit, you're also in a difficult situation with your finances, which means you don't have as much time either, right? You'd rather be making money, uh, working your job, right? So I, I think it's that's a unique value proposition where you're you're... Uh, building a, a, a tech enabled credit recovery plan um, with with the stages completely kind of um, uh, provided through technology, which is um, a game changer, I think, in, in the space as well, um, particularly. So, OK, so we talked about um, credit recovery um, and then your your kind of network of businesses that are accessing um, or providing uh, benefits to consumers and then also um, they have access to pr provide products um, or services or whatever to consumers directly through that wallet where they can cash out. Um, now, from the business perspective, before we go, I think we have about uh, seven minutes to go. So from a business perspective, quickly. Um, now, so what is the, the value proposition there for a business? So what services are there? Is it, is it a, a bank account for businesses? I know you have a payment feature. Can you run us through that? Yeah, um, if you think about uh, business, so actually before, um, sorry, so sorry to cut you off. Before before you get, get going, so and also, is this applicable to let's say um, a real estate agent um, um, who, in effect, is an entrepreneur or a business owner? So, so go ahead. Yeah, great, great question. So we'll go through both of those. Um, so if you think about our business offering, um, e even when we started in the early days, we had a business offering, but it wasn't really um, contextualized that way. If you think about businesses that want to get Canadians in the door, um, our cashback reward system does that. So the, the kind of interesting thing is, you know, we built up all these business clients with a valuable service for them, um, but we never really just described it that way. And I think, you know, we built on this expertise in terms of kind of owning all the, the tech to deploy products in house. And now we can actually provide these same business um, partners with products. Uh, so if you think about if you're a large Canadian company right now, um, you have a relationship where you understand your consumer um, incredibly well. Uh, and you may actually be, you know, one of their largest financial relationships. They may be spending a lot of dollars with you. Um, there are a lot of people other than yourself um, and other than that consumer that benefit um, from that relationship. So maybe they're using a credit card um, 
to buy with you that someone else is. So someone else is, you know, getting those fees. The consumer is paying those fees. Like the dollars before that transaction, maybe they're getting held in a in a bank account um, with someone else. Uh, there are all these kind of related benefits where companies would love to have that financial relationship um, with their consumer. And you see, um, you know, I'd say Apple's probably pushing into this most aggressively in the U.S. where they're saying, hey, um, you know, we know you better than anyone. Um, we should be the person that that has kind of that extended relationship with you through financial products. Um, we're able to offer that uh, to Canadian businesses here. I think for for your users, co-branded credit card is probably the, the easiest way to to picture that, but we can do lots of things. Like maybe um, if you're at a home improvement store, you want to offer people a special mortgage so that you know when they think about your home, um, you've given them a bonus on their their mortgage, um, and maybe they want to do all the associated home improvement with you. If you think about someone that's always investing um, in homes, refurnishing them, that may be a very uh, appealing product for a personal entrepreneur, and we can we can set that up um, for them so that that they can use it. And I think if you if you think about um, going to your real estate example uh, in particular, the the thing we found that's really advantage there is again you're you're a business you're a solo entrepreneur and you want to make that experience better for your clients, which you can do through financial products. And we've actually had a bunch of real estate agents uh, that have adopted us because they do want to reduce that friction. And one of the highest points of friction is you think about a real estate agent, your clients potentially going through the biggest transaction of their life. Um, and there are a lot of components where you can't help them. And that creates a, a fairly bad, uh, fairly negative experience. You think about even something as simple as, OK, who should I get a mortgage with? Um, you know, myself and friends have had realtors where they say, oh, like probably just call your bank um, and, you know, see what they can do for you. Uh, that's that's a fair answer. But at the same time, um, that's not really a, a supportive experience during a, an extremely stressful transaction. Um, you'd love your realtor to say, oh, like, you know, I get an advantage rate through X and here's the onboarding form um, and it'll take you two minutes and I'll, I'll be updated too when it's complete. Um, so we both know that this key part of your transaction is done. Um, that's tech that we can actually give realtors where they can give Canadians, you know, bonuses on their mortgage um, from NEO. We have them as, you know, a preferred partner. That's something where suddenly they can hold their client's hand and it's way different than saying, you know, look up the best mortgage. And it's it's tech enabled. It's not them, you know, going to our website because we're going to pay them something like we actually give them tech on their phone that lets them get uh, neo mortgages in the hands of their clients in a low friction way. And we can do that for other products like we can give them, you know, a, a preferred bank account um, that allows their clients to save their deposit. Those are the type of things where you already have a service and you have all these other components like your clients holding their deposit somewhere. They're probably getting less interest than us. They're probably paying more fees than us. Why aren't you as a realtor able to provide them, you know, a preferred rate on a bank account? That seems like great customer service as a as a solo entrepreneur. So those kind of key, um, you know, combinations of tech to deploy it and then the products in the back end to really help your customer. That's really let us lean into kind of these realtor partnerships in particular. And I think most of uh, most, um, uh, I guess, the s serious real estate professionals understand that the, that working with uh, partners in the industry is essential to providing a good client experience, right? So that these te this technology is really helping um, connect everyone and and work in a, in a more efficient and streamlined way so to allow the the consumer at the end of the day to have a good experience, which is the reason you're providing that service. Right. So exactly. um, I guess uh, we're, we're at time. So before we get going, do you have any final words uh, for, um, I guess, for um, uh, w anything we should look out for um, from Neo in the c coming year? Yeah, we have a couple uh, we have a couple really exciting things get announced. The, the things I'd probably say to your listeners is, you know, if they have comments on the product, um, you know, we're we're true to our word. We'd love to incorporate them. Um, if they do think they can partner in any way, they're welcome to reach out to me. You know, personally on um, LinkedIn's probably easiest. And we're we're hiring a lot for your young, you know, entrepreneur listeners that want to build something. Uh, we have a lot of roles available, and and we'd love to hear from them. So certainly appreciate uh, the time, and uh, thanks for setting it up. Th thank you for joining us. I, I will drop a link uh, for Mark's uh, LinkedIn in the bio as well for everyone to reach out. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Take care. 
If you're looking to retain Treadstone Law, it's never been easier. Our entire process is online. From completing the retainer to your signing appointment, everything is done from the comfort of your own home. No need to take time off to visit a lawyer's office for your signing when you can complete everything from your living room table. The best part is you don't have to pay anything when you're retaining our firm. Visit treadstonelaw.ca slash MASOffer or click on the link below to retain us today.